The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one for long to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. Welcome to Let's Go Racing. I'm Danny Gibson alongside Dick Girardi, and we're here to bring you the latest in horse racing and news from around the country. We're in the beautiful Parks Racing's third floor, and we have a really fun show for you today. It was top racing at Monmouth Park in the Grade 1 Million Dollar Haskell with a finish we will never forget and the Grade 1 United Nations on the turf. And our turf fillies and mares run in the first Grade 1 at Saratoga this season in the Diana Stakes. Dick and I also had the pleasure to visit the Stallion Hay Chub who stands at Delval Equine at Delaware Valley University learning all about Hay Chub and the breeding that goes in with him. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, it was a fun, fun last Friday when Danny and I were up there uh, visiting the university where they, they have this incredible equine program 120 students and yeah we you'll see some great video from up there so we especially wanted to see hey chubb obviously because he's standing at stud up there and he is the sire of course of chubb wagon who's eight for eight here with lupe preciado so that was kind of that was the day before the haskell uh that was fun so yeah, it was kind of a wild weekend for us it certainly was well since our parks racing local week got washed out let's start with the grade one million dollar TVG.com Haskell Invitational at Monmouth Park for three-year-olds going a mile and eighth. Post-time favorite is the number four hot rod, Charlie, four to five with the big equipment change blinkers off. Yeah, he came on the board at three to five, Danny. I knew he would be the favorite. I was surprised at how the betting went. I mean, he was the huge favorite. He ticked up to four to five just at the end, but obviously in his Belmont stakes, he ran second, but he ran a winning race. It was a brilliant second under pressure the whole way. Eventually gets passed and beaten by essential quality, but Hot Rod Charlie deserved to be the favorite. I don't know about four to five, but that's what it was. There were some crazy odds. Like you said, Chuck's been very consistent. Amanda Loon takes our second choice for trainer Brad Cox. Gets jockey Florent Giroux. Again, he's ridden him in all of his starts. They're at three to one odds. Yeah, now look, Amanda Loon finished second in the Derby. May eventually be first, depending if this ever comes to an end. Uh, the, the Derby... I don't, know, I don't even know what you call it at this point. Saga, Investigation. I yeah. yeah, I mean, we've heard nothing from the Kentucky Racing Commission. Uh, and then he came back and won the prep for this, the Pegasus, so they've clearly been pointing for the Haskell all along. They certainly have. Well, here's the call with Frank Miramati of the TVG.com Haskell Stakes. Following C, who will set the pace, prompted by Midnight Bourbon, who's just a neck back second. Hot Rod Charlie has backed off, two off the pace in third. Down at the rail, it's Mandaloon in fourth. He has about four lengths to make up. Pickin' time is in between horses, Basso outside of him, and anti-gravity. They're heading to the half-mile pole in the TVG.com Haskell, following C and Joel Rosario lead the way by a half-length. Midnight Bourbon has been keeping him company. Mandaloon, a threatening presence in third, tugging his way forward. Hot Rod Charlie is just outside of him, and then it's a gap of four lengths to Basso on the outside of Pickin' Time and anti-gravity. The new leader is Midnight Bourbon with a quarter of a mile to go, confronted by Hot Rod Charlie on the outside. Mandaloon Pink Cap following C at the rail. Here comes Hot Rod Charlie unleashed, and Mandaloon comes through with a smart move, and these two will fight it out. Hot Rod Charlie, oh, taking and losing the rider was Midnight Bourbon in mid-stretch. It's Hot Rod Charlie, Mandalone, Mandalone, Hot Rod Charlie, here's the line, photo finish. Well, certainly not the finish we were expecting. Hot Rod Charlie, our eventual winner, will be disqualified. He did clip heels with Midnight Bourbon and Jockey Paco Lopez. Both Jockey uh, Paco did get up, he was okay. Midnight Bourbon also finished the race without the rider. You right. see him running with the reins over his neck. He's fine. And uh, yeah, I mean, just an unfortunate situation. Mandaloons put up as our winner with uh, Florent Giroux. Yeah, it was scary, but the good news is the jockey's fine, the horse is fine. Yeah. Uh, that's the most important thing. Just a bizarre finish. I really think if uh, maybe Maybe if Pratt, and he said it afterwards, if he had been able to use his whip, uses it left-handed, maybe he keeps Hot Rod Charlie out of there. And Mandaloon came out a little bit, too. Uh, it was no, I don't think it was anybody's fault. I think it was just unfortunate. Hot Rod Charlie's the unluckiest horse in the country this year. Uh, Should have won the Belmont, I think. I mean, I thought he was the best horse. Clearly the best horse here. 
Uh, I thought Pratt's move on the first turn was brilliant when he set, went back to third and just an unsatisfying ending to a great race with two really good three-year-olds. And, and look, I, I, I know uh, Midnight Bourbon got interfered with in quotes. Uh, the best horse didn't win the race again. Mm -mm, and know. that's why I don't like disqualifications. Yeah. There's no satisfaction here. Mandaloon does, did not deserve to win the race, but that's how the rules are yeah. in this country. And real quick to talk about disqualifications. These jockeys have all been on the other end yep. of this. Jockey Flavian Pratt was put up to win the Kentucky Derby on right. Country House. Yep. Jockey Florent Giroux was disqualified here in the Cotillion on Monomoy Girl. Yep. And Paco, we all know, has a history with some he disqualifications. Does. So, you know, it's unfortunately part of the sport, very sportsmanship-like of uh, Flavian Pratt to apologize to Jockey Paco Lopez. And he simply said, hey, it happens, man. Yeah, I think he was, I actually think the horses were clear. It was just bizarre that they ended up clipping heels there. Because most of the time when that happens, there's nothing that happens. But that just was, and that's why the disqualification happened. I, he didn't take uh, change the possibility of the the way the finish was going to be. Nothing was going to change there, but that's how it happened. You think we'll see Mandaloon and Hot Rod Charlie at the PA Derby? Uh, Mandaloon for sure. Brad Cox says Hot Rod's going back to California Pacific Classic, maybe, and then hopefully Doug. I know I texted with him. He was on a radio show with me Saturday. I think he's thinking about the PA Derby as well for Hot Rod Charlie. Well, we hope we look forward to see the best of Hot Rod Charlie in a clean race next time. But it's time for head to, us to head to our first break. When we come back, we're going to visit the students at Delval Equine and Stallion H-Hub. So stick around because Let's Go Racing will be right back. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Pewter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the Mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. If you want action and you want it now, you gotta get the new Parks Racing Mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing Mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then, place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing Mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing Mobile app and get in on the action. Did you know the Pennsylvania horse racing industry spends tens of millions of dollars supporting agriculture? From local farmers and farm workers to veterinarians and more. And we do it with zero tax dollars while creating tens of thousands of jobs. Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Dick and I had the pleasure to go out to Delaware Val University, Delval Equines, the program, and uh, Hey Chubb, the stallion, stands there. We uh, talked with equine manager uh, Jenna Regal, and what a pleasure it was to meet those students. Yeah, I was so impressed. It really was, Dan. It was a lot of fun. I didn't realize that's where the horse stood until recently, and I said, well, this is interesting that he ends up uh, at a uh, university rather than a horse farm. And as Danny's uh, uh, feature is going to show here, it's a big deal up it there is. to have a stay, and they've had standard bred stallions. Danny Lopez, who owns the horse, made the deal, and I got a chance to spend some time, as you did, talking to people. I wrote a story for Let'sGoRacingParks.com. You put together this great feature story. It's a lot of fun to be up at Doylestown for this story. Yeah, it was meticulously run, and these students are really sharp. And yep. uh, here's more with breeding manager Jenna Regal. Tell us how Hey Chubb came to be here with your breeding program. So Hey Chubb's owner, Daniel Lopez, uh, decided he wanted him to stand in Pennsylvania. So he contacted us last year, last breeding season, and asked if we would stand him, and we jumped on the opportunity. So this was his second breeding season with us at the university. What's it been like having him? And uh, I mean, he's a beautiful sire. He's 21, he has a lot of energy. What's it been like having him here with you and your students? Um, it was definitely a learning curve last year. He's a quirky stallion. Um, once you figure out his quirks, he's amazing to be around. So we were excited to have him. Um, the component of live cover was also really great for our students. Most of our breeding is artificial insemination with the standard breads. So to have a thoroughbred to have to do live cover was a really great opportunity for the students. 
take us through the process of the mares. Now, do the mares typically that are going to breed the hay chub, do they ship in for the day? Have they been here? And where do you find your mares? So it's a variety. Some owners decide just to ship in for the breeding and then they'll take her home. Um, there's also an option to board here with us until the mare is in full. Um, mares can full out with us. So a lot of the chub mares, as I call them, will full out with us so that we can breed them back to chub when they're ready. One to nine never looks so good. Chub wagon struts her stuff to the 16th pole and the streak of perfection continues. Chub wagon wins. A lot of our viewers are really big fans of Hey Chubb's progeny, and we have Chubb Wagon right now, who's an amazing eight for eight. Have you guys been watching her success and cheering for her? Yes, I watch her races every weekend. I've been itching to go to see her race live. Um, I always send it to the students. Some of them are now following her, and they watch her as well. Well, we are just so thrilled that we could spend the afternoon with you. You guys did a great job, and good luck with all your future success here with your breeding program. Thank you so much. Well, I can't say how impressed I was with DelVal Equine. I mean, what a spectacular program for both thoroughbreds and standard breads. And, I mean, they do a really good job. We hope to get them here at Parks to run on Chub Wagon one day. Yeah, no question. The Equestrian Center, we were at the Breeding Center, and it just it was 120 students. This is Delaware Valley's 125th anniversary, so we were there at the right time. And, uh, and just a, a really great thing by Danny Lopez to have this horse over there. To, for the students to get hands on the first time they've ever had a thoroughbred horse with the live cover as I wrote about and you talked about before they just had the standard bread stands with the artificial insemination it's very different with the thoroughbreds. Absolutely what a great program and like we said just a, a well-run ship so good job to them. Well it's time for some national coverage our national coverage is brought to you by the Chapman Auto Group if their emblem is not on the back of your car or truck well you simply did pay too much and let's head back to Monmouth Park. We start with the Grade 1 United Nations going a mile and three-eighths on the turf course for the $500,000 purse. Our post-time favorite is number 10, the France-bred Tribuvon for trainer Chad Brown, and he gets the French jockey Flavian Pratt. Yeah, it was interesting. Arklow was the favorite the whole time until the last <laughs> minute or so, and people know the history of the United Nations. Of course, it was Bob Levy's invention down at Atlantic City. It was run there for years. When Atlantic City closed, it came up the Garden State Parkway to Monmouth Park. Well, I have to say, Tribuvon got favorite because how he looked in the paddock. I was there. His neck was bowed. He looked like he had his game face on. And Arklow, like we said, gets our second choice and teams back up with uh, Florent Giroux. Yeah, I bet a huge win parlay, Tribuvon to Hot Rod Charlie. Oh, that's a painful one. Well, <laughs> and I love the saddle towels of the United Nations. They have all the flags of the different countries. Yep. Very sharp. Well, let's see what happens in the call of the United Nations. It's Tribuvon saying catch me if you can in the grade one United Nations has opened up a five length lead. Winter's back is in second followed by Epic Bromance third. Then it's Imperador in fourth. Serve the King, green colors making progress along the inside. A length and a half back to Ocean's Map who is followed by Glynn County. Arklow is just inside of him. A three wide Fantasioso and another length and a half to Masterpiece. They're moving on to the back stretch Tribuvan still with a big lead. It's five lengths. Winters back by himself in second. Another three back to Epic Bromance in third. Then Imperador fourth as they head to the half mile pole. Serve the King is next. Arklo has been guided to the outside. Fantasioso is starting to make some headway. He is racing between horses. Glynn County just inside of him. Ocean's Map is dropping out of it as they head to the 3 8 pole. And then it's Masterpiece. Tribuvan's lead is down to two and a half lengths. He's chased intently by Winters back in epic bromance. Imperador is fourth, only four lengths off the leader. Serve the King is next. Arklow is far, far back. In front of him are both Fantasioso and Glynn County. They're at the top of the stretch. Tribuvan still with a two and a half length lead. A host of pursuers, Epic Bromance running a good race. Serve the King looking for room. Imperador is in second and he's coming after Tribuvan. But Tribuvan is going to take them all the way under Flavian Pratt. While Tribuvon was out for a gallop, the lone speed and it paid off. He went wire to wire with jockey Flavian Pratt for Chap Brown. Yeah, that one was never in doubt. I mean, it was the fractions weren't really that hot. Danny no. was away easy. I don't know. I don't think Arklo was going to have any chance to win, but he was eliminated on the far turn. It was Clip Heels Day at Monmouth Park. <sighs> Toronto who got the worst of it in this one, and Arklo was way back. He's obviously better than that. But Tribuvon is a major player 
in the turf division. Of course, his stable mate, domestic spending, looks like the best older turf horse in the country. Right. He didn't have to face dis domestic spending no. this time. But boy, I mean, Tribuvan couldn't have looked better in the paddock. Yep. I was extremely impressed, and I, I'm not surprised by that performance. Not at all. Well, speaking of turf superstars, let's head to Saratoga for the Grade One Diana Stakes, a mile and an eighth over the turf course. And our favorite is international star turf Philly Summer Romance for trainer Charlie Appleby. Yeah, Summer Romance just missed winning to her stable mate in the uh, Just a Game and most recent start, Alfika. Charlie Appleby trains both of these uh, Phillies. Yeah, like, like we said, second choice. There's three of them that kind of take it. La Mesta, Alfika, and Harvey's Little Goyle all at 7-2 to two odds taking second choice. So uh, Good race. Oh, Diana's always a good race. Chad Brown usually wins this, but... It's not often the European guys come over for this one. I think they're starting to figure it out. Well, here's the call to grade one, Diana. Summer romance setting the pace here. Tracked by long shot Vigilante's way on the outside. And down at the rail is a La Signate next in third. In between horses and moving up is a pocket square from fourth. Harvey's Little Goyle is next in fifth. And the opening quarter mile over the good turf, 23 and two fifth seconds. And now the field is on the back stretch. And it is summer romance in frontier it is summer romance the leader with vigilante's way still right behind in second on the outside is pocket square next in third la signati down at the rail on the outside is harvey's little goyle then comes altica in sixth followed by lamista and magic attitude is the trailer the half in 48 seconds as they head for the far turn summer romance continues to lead here it is summer romance now by a length and a half vigilante's way in second pocket square is down on the inside in third harvey's little girl on the far outside and four, then comes Altica as the field comes into the stretch. It is Summer Romance trying to go wire to wire. Harvey's little girl on the outside is Altica. Down towards the rail is Pocket Square. Summer Romance, here's stablemate Altica driving up on the outside. Altica has taken over. While well, the Godolphin Phillies running first and second, Altica she had the winning move. She was able to relax behind horses, yep. and uh, Manny Franco was able to swing her out and, and make that final storm. And some of romance, nothing in defeat to get that second. No, I mean, it looked like the Justa game again, right? It it's did. The same two horses, the same kind of running styles. Uh, Summer Romance led, and now Thika came and got her. The win picture was so beautiful. Jockey Manny Franco's daughter was petting picture? Alfica. Was it was awesome. just so sweet. You could tell <laughs> Alfica loved it. And shout out to Devin Doherty. She did the Godolphins Flying Star program. Mm -hmm. She just broke Alfica's full sister over in Ireland. Very so I was talking cool. about her earlier today. Very exciting. Nice. Well, time to head to Del Mar, where the turf meets the surf in the grade two San Diego handicap. A mile and 16th, uh, $250,000 purse. And our post time favorite is number four. Royal Ship, the Brazilian bred for trainer Papa Mandela with Mike Smith. Yeah, look, this horse has been very good since he came to the States, ran in Brazil earlier, most recently second in the Gold Cup, won the Californian, and Mike Smith and Richard Mandela, they've won a few races together. They certainly have in those red and white silks. And our second choice is Express Train with jockey Juan Hernandez for trainer John Sheriffs of Zenyatta fame. Yeah, and by Union Rags, the 2012 Belmont winner, of course, who was owned by uh, Jamie and Phyllis Wyeth down in Chester County the famous wife artistic family and Union Rags has become a really good sire and Express Train is one of his good offspring. He certainly does. Looks just like his daddy. Here's Trevor Denman with the call of the San Diego Handicap. Rushy a narrow leader. Express Train keeps the pressure on and Mo Mosa on the far side. Royal Ship comfortable down at the rail. Races along in the fourth spot. Magic on tap. Tripoli on the far side. Three lengths covers six runners. Kiss today goodbye at the back of the leading group and now a gap of five lengths back to Sheriff Brown. Past the half mile they go in the San Diego and Rushy now nice and relaxed on the lead. Has it by a neck. Express train is second and Mo Moser on the far side. Royal ship just tracking them down at the rail fourth. Tripoli's in there as well. In behind Tripoli, magic on tap. No more than three lengths covering all these runners. Kiss today, goodbyes in there too. And last of all, Sheriff Brown coming to the top of the lane. Rushy at the rail. Express train up alongside. Mo Moser makes it three and a line. Royal Ship just waiting, waiting for room in the red cap. Can he find somewhere to run? Tripoli's on the outside of that. 
top of the lane now and rushes in deep water. Express train gets the lead. Royal Ship sees a hole at the rail. And here comes Royal Ship in the red cap at the rail. Express train running a big one. Tripoli running a huge one on the outside. Any one of the three. Tripoli on the outside. Express train and Royal Ship. Express train, the more they asked, the more he gave. Well, Express train benefits from a very hot pace, but he was part of the hot pace. He was up much closer today and uh, really just hard fought back with those big long strides gets his nose down. Yeah, he was good and you know, Royal Ship was good too, kind of dove to the rail. I don't think the horse was all that comfortable down there. Yeah, didn't no. really get through. Now we'll probably see both of them back in the Pacific Classic, maybe against Todd Rod Charlie. And this was the second day at Del Mar. Del Mar had opened the day before. They had a record handle. Saratoga had opened two days before. They had a record handle. So these are the two meets everybody looks forward to all year long. So racing still alive. Love to hear <laughs> alive it. Alive and well. <laughs> well, it's time to head to another quick break. When we come back, we're going to have our jockey and trainer of the week and more top racing from Monmouth Park. Let's Go Racing will be back in a flash. Turning for Home is a nonprofit that has provided nearly 2,800 former racehorses with a safe retirement. The program was created through the foresight of the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We all love animals, and to give back to something that helps us so much, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Responding to the need for a better system that addressed the uncertain future for the retiring equine population at Parks Racing, the PTHA rallied horsemen to support the program. These horses can do anything from hunter jump to Western to therapeutic riding. Turning for Home became the first on-track retirement program at our year-round racetrack. We want to make sure that our horses that have run so well for us over the years get the great opportunity to get a new vocation. Out of everything that we've done in Pennsylvania for racing, I think that's the thing we can be most proud of. If you would like to help these amazing animals find a great second career and forever home, please give us a call or contact us at turningforhome.org. Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Our Jockey and Trainer of the Week is brought to you by Turning for Home, our racehorse retirement program right here at Parks Racing, been going strong since 2008. And we have another great Turning for Home success story. Burger Lane, a Pennsylvania bred, was trained by Patricia Farrow, proudly owned and bred by RNL Racing. He raced 13 times with two wins, three seconds. He was retired due to a tendon injury. He got great rehabilitation and retraining job at one of our partner farms in North Carolina, Double Take Stables, and he's now with adopter uh, Lauren. And uh, I'll tell you what, Burger Lane was not the easiest horse to retrain, but him and uh, Lauren have been such a great force on the show team, and they're a great match. Lauren's a great horsewoman. Well, our Jockey of the Week, congratulations to Abner Adorno. Abner's last 11 mounts, listen to this, mm -hmm. eight of them, first, second, and Oof, third. Hello. He had a nice win at Monmouth on Peanut Butter Special. Yep. And I blew it. It was a Parks 10 cent super fit. <laughs> it was all Parks jockeys. It paid $972. Come on, Danny, where were uh, you? What are you doing? I snoozed you on were that there. one. I was there and I snoozed. <laughs> but good job to Abner. And our trainer of the week is Kate DeMassey. You know, she's really been rolling. Last, uh, she won three races at three different tracks uh, last week. Very consistent. My favorite turf monster, Dubini, <laughs> won last week. He's a super cool sprinter. So congratulations to her to as well. Hall of Famer. She certainly is. Well, we're going to head into some race recap brought to you by the Pewter Stable. Check them out at pewterstable.com. A great partnership and become an owner today and the, get the thrill of owning a racehorse. We're going to start at Monmouth Park with the Wolf Hill of $100,000, five and a half furlong. So don't snooze, but keep your eyes on the number one. Yeah, the number one is the critical way. And the reason we're showing this uh, race in critical ways, one to ten in here, it's not going to be easy. Uh, the critical way is when I roll here, uh, Danny, seven now for uh, uh, 19 lifetime on the grass. We're very likely to see him back in the uh, Parks Dash here and then the Turf Monster on PA Derby Day, September 25th. Absolutely. As soon as Paco Lopez gets clear sailing, you see them just storm to the finish. Yep. Congratulations to them. And uh, continuing at Monmouth Park, it was the grade three matchmaker for Phillies and uh, Mares three year olds it up. And really cool, whoever wins this race, the winner gets a choice of a free breeding yep. with a Windstar Stallion, Audible, Global Campaign, or Tom's Day Talk. Yeah, this, was a, this is again a, an Atlantic City fixture, a Bob Levy idea from back in the day has moved up the Garden State Parkway to uh, Monmouth Park. And Julian Foxtrot looks like she's got to win this race. She gets right through on the rail, jumps out to a huge lead in the stretch, but she is going to get run down. 
by the greatest finisher in the sport. Uh, it's Joe Rosario. Absolutely. And great Island on the outside at four to one coming up to just get there at the wire. It was a Chad Brown exacta. Joel, man, how he, does he time it? That man has ice in his veins. It was a beautiful finish. Was very surprised to see him get up for the win. And Mammoth Park continuing with the stakes action. It was the grade three Mammoth Cup, a mile and an eighth. And uh, yeah, Val Harbor, the one, takes the lead, but he's not up there for long. Yeah, New York traffic, everybody knows, is the eight to five favorite in this race. The four has every chance, uh, just fades in the end. And just like, he just, I, you would have thought this was his race to win. But here comes Dr. Post for Todd Pletcher, was winning at Saratoga, winning at Monmouth. He had a great Saturday. Dr. Post with one of the better races he's had in his career. Added blinkers and uh, Joel Rosario, congratulations Again. to him. That was his third stakes <laughs> win on the card. And uh, boy, what a finish for him. And it's time for some eye on racing. The action continues at Saratoga. They have the grade one coaching club, American Oaks, and the grade three caress on the turf. Yeah, so we're talking to three-year-old Phillies and the CCA Oaks. That's the prep for the Alabama. Keep a good eye on this race because we're very likely to see some of these horses September 25th in the Cotillion. Can't wait. And our friends down in Maryland, they have four stakes card at Pimlico with the grade three BWI International Turf Cup, their big race on the day. And that's our good friend Trish Bowen putting all that together down at Pimlico. Good job, Trish. And Delmar has two great twos on the turf, the Eddie Reed and the San Clemente stakes. And I'm sure we're going to see some of those top West Coast turf runners. No question. And keep an eye on that because you could see some of the Breeders' Cup turf back at Del Mar in November. Lots of stakes action. You can come hang out with here at Parks or use your Parks Racing mobile app. Well, we're going to head into our final break. When we come back, news and notes. So stick around because Let's Go Racing will be right back. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Buter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Our news and notes is brought to you by the Granny Fund. The Granny Fund provides continuing education for our wonderful backstretch family. And uh, yeah, let's talk about mainstay of half sister to Vquist. She had a great start and uh, stumbles at the break in the Schuylerville, but you know, what, what can we say about her? I mean, look, she ran second. Yeah. It, it, she was really beaten at the beginning of the race. Uh, pretty birdie got loose on the lead wire to wire, but. She'll be back, uh, fight another day. The next day, Vquist worked for the first time since Florida, and Mike Wells, the DRF clocker, was really impressed. I think she, she's at Saratoga, probably come back here running the Catherine Sophia at the end of August when we come back, and then hopefully in the Cotillion on uh, uh, September 25th, Danny. Uh, so we'll, we'll see about uh, Vquist. Hopefully she can come all the way back. Dick, that does it all That's for it. this week, but if you guys want to come ha hang out, we're racing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, post 12. 55 and uh, thanks so much for joining us we'll see you next week on let's go racing